Hey friend, welcome back. Today we're talking to Kate Spear. Now you might remember that Kate and I chatted on a podcast back in March or April. I'll drop the link in the description in case you want to catch up on that episode. But Kate is a marketing professional who literally created a marketing campaign for her career search. It was such an innovative idea, something that I always am supportive of in terms of You need to become a marketer in order to fully express, articulate, communicate, and make your strengths visible to potential employers. And she took this and ran with it. It is an amazing story. And when we first interviewed, uh, when she and I first had that conversation, it was very much about what she was currently doing and she hadn't yet landed an offer. Well, now Kate has landed an amazing offer, and today we're going to talk about her entire process, how she felt along the way, some difficult decisions she had to make, and some new doors that are opening up for her as a result of this marketing campaign. All right, let's get started with today's episode. Kate, you always know it's such a good time when we get together and Last time we talked, there was so much happening. I had reached out to you specifically because you were an amazing marketer and you were pulling your marketing skills into your profession. So before we even get started, do you want to kind of catch everyone up to kind of how we met and what you did as part of your um, professional marketing campaign? Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me back. I just feel like, you know, I'm getting to catch up with an old friend, which is awesome and exciting. So I'm so happy to be here. Um, But you and I, we met originally through one of my posts. So I was on one of your previous podcasts where we go in deep to all of that, but just to catch people up if they didn't hear that episode. I basically am a marketer. That's what I've done kind of my whole career. It's what I went to school for. It's what I've done successfully for businesses. And I found myself at the beginning of the year as a job seeker. And I had never really been a job seeker before. I've never had a period of kind of where I wasn't working and I was actively looking for a job. And this year is definitely an interesting time to be searching for a job because the market is tough right now. Um, I feel like you hear all these things like there's a talent shortage, blah, blah, blah. But I think actually it's hard to find a job right now. Um, So I took everything that I knew from my marketing career, my marketing experience, and I used that to market myself. And I will tell you, it's definitely a little bit scary. Um, It's very, I don't want to say it's very easy because it's always hard to be a successful marketer. There's definitely some challenges there, but it's a little easier to promote a brand, a business, a company, somebody else, another executive on the team. I've never really promoted myself Mm. until now. So it was scary to do that, but I did. I put myself out there, started posting on LinkedIn regularly, made a website for myself. And last time we talked, I feel like that was maybe three or four months ago, I was kind of right smack in the middle of my job search. I was picking up some traction. Some of my posts ended up doing really well, which is kind of how we got connected in the first place. And um, now I did find a job. Um, (laughs) Thank you. We're recording this on a Monday. And I was actually saying today that people that I work with, this is the start of week four for me already, which is crazy because I feel like I just started. But today is the start of my week four and it is going well. And yeah, I'm excited to be back and kind of fill you in on all the good stuff. Oh, there's so many things. And for those of you listening, just so you know, we started recording immediately when we got on the phone. So all of this is a on the phone on zoom. I'm dating myself clearly. Um, but all <laughs> of this is a brand new conversation. So I'm just as curious as you are. And so I'm going to start it off with the very first question is that, you know, as you're going through that process, You've been at your new company for four weeks now, um, but, you know, it's easy to think, oh, you got hired right away because you're a professional marketer, mm-hmm. right? Like, give us like a synopsis of the timeline. And um, I know that we met when you were kind of starting that process, maybe a little bit into that process, but it's been some time now. So yeah, walk us through that timeline. Yes. So I'm so glad you asked this too, because I am 
the eternal optimist. I will see the good in any situation. And I feel like that's what I like to portray. And that's the parts of the story I like to tell. Again, that's the marketer in me. I can take any (laughs) situation or story and like make it a good story that people want to hear. But I feel like it's important to share that it was not an easy path by any means. I feel like, you know, I kept putting one foot in front of the other and I kept saying, Mm -hmm. I don't exactly know where this is going to take me, but I'm just going to keep going like one foot in front of the other. Let's go, go, go. But there was definitely some hard days. And if you're job searching right now, I feel like there's all those feelings, you know, like you doubt yourself, you wonder, you know, I used to think I was good at my old job. Was I actually good? I don't know. It makes you question kind of everything that you think you knew. And I did get some good initial traction. And I will tell you, I don't know that like that one viral post that I had actually yielded any interviews from that, but it was a combination of all the small things I was doing. Mm. So I know we talked on the last time I was on with you about just consistency. Like you have to keep going. And like I said, put that one foot in front of the other. So um, yeah, my experience, I interviewed with quite a few companies. Some weren't Mm. a good fit. I always look at that as like a two-way street. Some weren't necessarily a great fit for me and others chose to go with a different candidate. So you have to like deal with all those feelings of rejection. I feel like one day too, um, (laughs) I was always very strategic about where I was applying, you know, like Mm -hmm. quality over quantity. And I wanted to do my research and we can talk a little bit more about like how exactly I found my job and the steps of how that all came to be. Mm -hmm. But the one day I felt like I was kind of getting frustrated because it's like, this is a little ridiculous that I still don't have a job. And here we are. And I did the Mm -hmm. whole like rage apply thing. And I just like quick applied to like 20 different jobs. It's the thing right now. (laughs) But I don't recommend that at all because I feel like all 20 of those, I just got the standard like rejection email back. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. dear Catherine, thank you for your application. We're going in a different direction. (laughs) So it was just kind of like, clearly that's not the best way to go about Mm -hmm. looking for a job because I got no good responses that way where I got quite a few good responses kind of doing things a little bit differently. So, but yeah, I had those moments where it's like, what am I doing? This is taking too long. Um, but yeah, it, it ended up good with a happy ending and I found, you know, I think where I'm meant to be. Oh, I completely agree. You know what you're saying about apply. I've got a phrase in my head that I'm not going to use, but like apply generically and you'll get a generic response. It's just, you know, I, I, it's like you put a quarter and you're going to get something worth a quarter back, right? Like it's just the way that it happens. Um, But I know people, you know, when I'm in that process, I feel like, okay, there's a ton of jobs. One of them's going to hire me. I'll have a job in a month, right? Um, Can you just summarize for us like what others should expect? Maybe what your timeline was, was it three months? Was it six months? Um, and, And what others might expect in this current you know, scenario we have with um, hiring. Yeah, absolutely. So it all took longer than I thought it was going to. I absolutely thought originally right out the gate that I would find somewhere to land quickly. Mm -hmm. I really thought it would be quick. And I actually think when I got my past jobs, you know, years, years ago, Mm -hmm. that all happened fairly quickly. So I was kind of assuming that it would be a similar story this time around. It was not. And that's okay. Mm Because I have been saying all along, sometimes good things are worth waiting for. I would have rather waited a little longer for the right fit than to jump into something that maybe wasn't necessarily a good match. So the last day at my old job was in December, kind of right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I took some time to just kind of like process that kind of grieve that loss a little bit and kind of get my game plan ready in my head. I was getting my resume done. So I didn't actually start anything until February. Mm -hmm. So two months I was kind of laying low. I maybe applied for one or two jobs if I saw something that was interesting. But at that point in time, I feel like my resume wasn't even all that good. Like I wasn't quite ready yet. And February 13th was the day I kind of made my first LinkedIn post that I was no longer at my old company. And then I just started posting very consistently after that. Mm -hmm. Within that week, I posted my open to work. I announced my website. 
And I think it was a few weeks after that, probably the beginning of March, that I had my post that went pretty viral and reached a lot of people and got on some great podcasts like yours and got invited to speak. So things kind of started taking off. But even then, I feel like I did not get my job offer that I accepted. I feel like it was maybe May 15th or 16th when I accepted the offer. So I feel like from start to finish, we were looking at like three months. Yeah. And the job that I ended up accepting, which has been awesome so far, but it took some time too to even just like go through the rounds of interviews. I mean, Mm -hmm. I feel like we were talking for probably a month from start to offer just because I had to interview with different people Mm -hmm. and like do all of the rounds. And then after I got that job offer, like I said, it was maybe like May 15th or 16th, but then I had to do like the background tests, yep. background screenings and drug tests and all of that fun stuff that go with it. And my first day was June 20th. Mm. So I feel like me, it was kind of six months from start to finish. But really, if I look at time, I was actively mm-hmm. in job search. We were maybe at like three or four months. Yeah. And it's it's interesting even to hear like as a career coach. And then you're someone in the marketing field, like, you know, how these campaigns go and stuff. It's interesting because do you know the average time frame that it takes to get a targeted position? Like, do you have an idea of like what that might be? I don't know. I would guess maybe like four months and only that's going off of my experience. You're absolutely right. So oh, it cool. feels like a long time, but three to six months is almost like the standard amount of time that it should take to get a targeted job. Now you can go out there and get a job. I mean, you probably had an offer way sooner, but it wasn't like the right fit, right? So when you think of what's the typical, you know, standard time, I would say between three and six months. And so you were on the shorter end of that when you look at like your targeted, um, you know, your targeted job search period. And to me, that is a huge success. Like not only did you land a position that you're interested in, but you also landed one at a company that you're very excited to be a part of. I even saw some of your recent LinkedIn posts and some of the exciting stuff that you're doing already, which is really, really fun. Um, Before we jump into that, I was also curious, you know, I know that you didn't accept every offer. Mm -hmm. And so from the candidate's perspective, I know a, a lot of candidates aren't either used to, or it's a, it's an interesting concept to say, I didn't take this position or I was being choosy. Right. So can you walk us through sort of your thought process of how did you decide what was a good fit for you? And how did you let go of a position when you're like, I've been looking for, you know, X amount of months and I was starting to lose hope or lose a little confidence or what, you know, and then you found one and you're like, ah, but this isn't it. Yes. So that's hard. And that's scary. too. (laughs) I will tell you. Yeah. Um, On one hand, it's a bit of a confidence boost because you're kind of feeling low and questioning yourself. And it's like, oh, like somebody picked me like they they know that I'd be good at their company. So like that made me feel good, like all the the warm and fuzzies. But I feel Mm -hmm. like the, the key is truly knowing what you want. And the post that I made, like my green banner post, the one that did go a little bit viral, it was all about, I'm looking for more than just a job, like a job where I Mm -hmm. clock in and get a paycheck. So I feel like I was always pretty clear on that in my head. I wanted somewhere Mm -hmm. that I could make an impact. I wanted somewhere where I could grow and learn and develop further. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted somewhere where I could lead. So I was coming from like a VP role when I was looking for kind of something similar in my mind. I was like, I could be okay, maybe like a director or something in there if I had to be, but I wanted something again, where I had that leadership capability because I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was hard and it was scary because there were two companies actually that I can think of that I interviewed with and did give me an offer and they were fantastic. If anybody's like listening from those two companies, I love them. They were wonderful companies. They are companies that I am still like cheering on and liking their mm-hmm. posts on LinkedIn, but the one Um, I don't think they were quite ready for me yet, meaning like they were looking for somebody in marketing. I don't know that they were looking for necessarily like a marketing leader as much as they were looking for just like an an independent contributor. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, we weren't really aligned on Mm -hmm. what they were looking for and what I had to offer again. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. fantastic company. That will be an excellent job for somebody, but I just knew that wasn't a good fit. And then the other company that I interviewed with and gosh, I love these people, the people that I interviewed with, I mean, like we connected right away, mm-hmm. had such a great conversation. Um, and I had to turn them down too, which was very scary. And in, in the mm-hmm. moment, it's like, I hope this isn't like a bad decision <laughs> that I'm going to yeah. regret later. But with them, it was just kind of, they were a small organization, like less than 10 people. Mm -hmm. And they were incredible. I loved them. I loved what they were doing, the mission, the work, all of that. But they had even said to me, their concern with me, and I shared this concern, they were like, we think you're going to get bored. Like, we think you would Mm -hmm. love this job and you'd be good at it, but we think you'd be bored. In my initial reaction, it's like an interviewer, it's like, no, I wouldn't be bored. I'll be excited <laughs> and I'll learn and it will be great. But the more I thought about that, because I did, I like slept on it, took a, two, a few days and I was thinking about it, but I was like, they're right. They're right. I mean, I feel like after I know, just know myself and it would be good and I would have been good at that job. I would have loved it, but I do know if there was nowhere for me to go, nowhere for me to advance to, mm. nothing more for me to take on. I just know that in six months to 12 months, I'd be like itching for more and I'd feel the need to start looking again. And I didn't want to do that to myself or to them yeah. um, just because that wouldn't be fair to them either. So um, interestingly enough, having that very honest conversation with them lent itself to just like some 1099 work. I might be helping them on like a project basis here and there, but I just knew as an employee long-term, it wasn't going to be a good fit. But it's definitely scary to say that and admit that and turn down a job when you're looking. Oh, I can't even, you know, it's one thing to turn down a job when you're looking, but when it's like on month three, Mm -hmm. you know, and this is the piece you talked about your value set and knowing what you're looking for ahead of time. And this is one of the reasons why I always say, don't apply as your step one. There's so much that happens before that getting clear on where you are in life, your values five years ago, 10 years ago, when you started at XYZ company are not necessarily the same values you have now, what you wanted for your life and for your future may not be the same. And so it's like, let's go back and reevaluate your purpose, your mission, your vision, you know, and it doesn't have to get too woo woo. Like we're just kind of centering ourselves again and figuring out like, what do we want our life to look like? And then deciding from there, what are our parameters? Like, what are we willing to take? What are we willing to not take? You know? And then along the way, you also find, um, you also find different things that you're like, oh, I hadn't thought about this. Like you said, and now is a a good time to kind of sleep on it and decide, is this something that I really want? Because, you know, so easy to say, yes, let's start this. It's so exciting, right? Um, But just like in, and this sounds really serious, but just like in a marriage, you don't just want to jump into something, right? This is a long-term relationship you're going to be having with this company. And so you do want to think about that. Okay. So I love how you shared, you know, your, your process, both of feeling like, oh, it's taking a while. And then also (laughs) making those tough decisions to let go of some fantastic opportunities and why you've done that. So as we're going through this process, LinkedIn was part of your marketing campaign. And you actually had multiple facets of your marketing campaign. I would love for you to sort of summarize your overall marketing campaign, and then talk a little bit about how each of those pieces helped you, or maybe wasn't quite as effective for you in the way of getting a position. Um, Because then we're going to start segueing into the new opportunities that you have going on. Because I know that there's some cool stuff that you're doing. Yes. Oh, I love this question because coming as a marketer, you know, this is like my favorite thing to talk about. So I feel like a really solid marketing campaign, one, it's consistent and it's strategic. And usually that goes across like multiple channels in different ways, because if you're looking as a marketer, you want to make sure you're reaching the right audience and they might not all be on LinkedIn. So it's like, how can I pepper this out? The same message but kind of in different ways and different formats so that I'm reaching not just the most people, but the most 
right people, if that makes sense. So I built a website and I always say to people, like, you don't have to build a website the way I did, but coming from a a marketer, it was kind of like, I'm going to prove to you that I'm good. Like, this is the kind of results that I can give your business. Mm. So I built a website and it has all kinds of cool things on it. I mean, right now there's like resources that I've built and things where if you put in your name and email, I can email you a PDF downloadable resource things that I made and put together, but there's a podcast on there um, that I put together just to show people that I could make a podcast for you. There's links to um, a book I helped publish on Amazon, and there's all different ways that people can connect with me. They can connect with me there. They can email. There's a text code that they can send uh, like a short text to and get an automated response. And um, I did a lot on LinkedIn. LinkedIn was kind of my primary platform for reaching those people, although I did dabble in some other social media as well. But LinkedIn, I cannot like stress enough how awesome that has been. And again, I didn't just post once or twice. It's now I made a commitment to myself back in February. Mm. Gosh, it's been five months already that I would continuously post And now that once you get that momentum going, it's like you have to keep it going. And again, when I started that, it was kind of like, I don't, I don't know where this is going to go, but we're going to put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice because I do think as I was applying for jobs, people can go over there and see, and it gives you a kind of a glimpse of who I am and my personality and some Mm -hmm. things that I've done and the way that I talk and the way that I interact with people. And it's all very authentic because that's the Kate that's showing up for work for you too. So it kind of gives people a glimpse behind the scenes. And then I think this is where you were going to go with it too. The coolest thing that I did not expect to happen was just how many people that I've met, like incredible people that I will now consider lifelong friends that I did not know six or seven months ago Mm -hmm. that I met posting on LinkedIn and we just kind of connected and I have this whole little network of amazing, awesome people like yourself that has kind of come as a result of all of that. Gosh. And I think, you know, just everything that you're sharing right now comes back to a concept that we talked about in the first episode. And that's this concept of just stir the water, just stir the water. You don't know what's going to happen. It's just human contact with someone else. Like there is the posting is important. And, but I think a lot of times we think of that as mechanical as technology, but the whole point of posting is to connect with another person is to put something out there that someone else can say me too. Like that is the entire goal behind why you would post something. And I think we get lost in that in the mechanics of, okay, what do I post? How many words? What should it say? And you take all these classes and figure, you know, learn from all these social media influencers. But the reality is you're just trying to connect with someone. And what I think is really cool is that as you're, you know, putting this content out there as a marketer, you're putting out content that resonates so much with so many people. And in that process, we started talking about you know, other facets of like this entire situation, this whole new environment you have single-handedly created on LinkedIn, right? (laughs) And that's this idea of like the fact that you don't have to be a marketer in order to market yourself. And I believe I saw a post from you on this that I was like, yes, you know, where you're helping people or sharing how to market yourself, how to become a professional marketer. Um, Do you want to share a little bit about that? Because I've always thought that's an interesting topic. You put that into words for me as we were like talking in the last episode. And I just think you have a really unique standpoint. So do you want to share about that? Yes, I think I titled it like how to job search like a marketer. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's very strange to me. I mean, I guess not really, but I feel like it was surprising to me how many people then started coming to me for job advice. And I I'm not a career coach or have ever really done any of this professionally. I mean, I was a marketer professionally, but then you have to take a step back and it's like, actually, that's what people (laughs) want to know how to do. So it was just kind of little steps, little tweaks that you can make, you know, the stuff that probably other people were talking about too, how to optimize your LinkedIn, but also really how to connect with people. 
um, and how to not be afraid to put yourself out there and to create content and do it consistently and not be afraid to kind of make some noise. I feel like every job searcher, myself included, it's like, I'm a great hire. But if you're not telling anybody that, nobody's going to know. Like it almost goes back to, I mean, I see this with my husband and I have all boys Um, for my kids too. So it's like, nobody's a mind reader. Like if you want something, you actually have to tell them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took that same approach and I encourage other people to do it too. You know, you have to put yourself out there and not be afraid to make some noise and say, Hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing too, the flip side of that. So I kept posting on LinkedIn, kind of kept this messaging going consistently. And it's just been awesome. Again, all the great people I connected with, but at my new job. So I work for a much larger company now than what I have Mm. in the past. I mean, thousands of people worldwide work for the Mm. company that I work for now. And I've met people now at my job that know me from my posting. Like they were like, Oh, we saw you on LinkedIn. We knew you were coming. And I've been posting a little bit about my new job and it's getting the attention of people at my company and some higher up people in the company. So it's almost like there's an added benefit after you get your job to kind of keep going and do that whole, make some noise. Like, Hey, I'm here because now I'm on people's radars that maybe I wouldn't have been if I wasn't like a consistent voice on LinkedIn. My goodness. We can go into a whole new direction here. Okay. This (laughs) idea of if I work really hard, then I will move up. And I'm like, good job working really hard. However, there comes a point where we realize we're working on the wrong things in order to move up or we're working so hard, we're not being visible or vocal enough for other people to to see us. And it's less about bragging, right? I feel like bragging, anytime we speak highly of ourselves, we think it's bragging, but it's actually not a, if it's true and B, if the motive behind it, isn't just to puff ourselves up, but there is a strategic way of communicating your strengths, of putting yourself out there, of, you know, throwing ripples out into the water, seeing where things go. And so you've got in a way that I don't think would be necessarily possible within your current company. It sounds like LinkedIn has opened up opportunities for people to see you that normally would not have seen you, right? So how can we kind of make this really practical for folks that are listening, whether they want to get promoted in a company or if they're currently job seeking from outside of a company and they're trying to get in, right? What are some things that you might share um, as part of your, uh, I think you said, um, what did you say? You look for a job like a marketer. Tell me again. Yeah. J- job search like a marketer. Job search like a marketer. So yes, share some of those tips that would help people to get seen in the ways that you're getting seen lately. Yes, absolutely. So I would say it just starts again with not being afraid to put yourself out there. And I feel like people get so hung up on, I don't know what to say, or I don't have the perfect post. And it's like people get too hung up on perfect rather than done. And it's just like, you want to focus on done. If you're waiting for perfect, it will never happen. The moment will never, ever happen. And so just putting stuff out there. And I feel like I have kind of a note section that I have on my phone when I have like a good idea or just, Mm. you know, I pay attention to conversations that I have with my friends or my coworkers or my husband about stuff. And it's like, well, that would make a good post. It's something that I could talk about because you also want to be authentic. I feel like sometimes you see the post that, you know, like chat GPT wrote that you want it to be kind of in your original voice and what you would say if you were talking to a friend, because that's how you make the connections that you were talking about earlier. So I would say, you know, and it's hard. It's hard if you've never done that before, because I never really did that before until February when it started. And what happened for me, and I would say that this has happened for other people because we've talked about it before, but you start to make like your little network of people. And it's not just people that you're connected with, but you get to know people, people that will comment and like on your stuff. And then you have to reciprocate that. So I feel like every day when I'm going in there and posting, it's not just about me posting. I'm looking at other people and my friends that I've met on LinkedIn and I'm liking and commenting on their stuff too, because Mm -hmm. it's just like when you 
give that good energy, people want to give it back to you. And it's not about being manipulative at all. It's about connecting with people and truly engaging with them and connecting on a deeper way than just a post. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there and kind of just keep it consistent. I also see people that will post maybe a time or two. I've actually seen this recently where I was like, oh, look at them. Like they got their little LinkedIn post up and they might not get a lot of traction on that. And then they get discouraged and they stop. Mm -hmm. So I would say not to fall into that trap too, because sometimes it does start slow and sometimes it takes time to figure out your voice and what resonates with people. And I feel like everybody starts at chapter one, you know, you can't Mm -hmm. compare your, your chapter one to somebody else's like 20 that they've maybe been building a following for years. So of course they get a ton of engagement. So not be afraid, consistency. And then just get creative with it too. Actually, Mm -hmm. my job that I found that I'm at now, um, I saw the job posting. I think I originally saw it on LinkedIn and I went and I submit my application, but it was one of those, you know, 125 people (laughs) have applied for this job. Yeah. So I got, I got creative. I started looking at the company and I was looking at people that work in the company because you can like filter that down on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I found people that looked like they worked in communication And I messaged a few of them and I was just like, hi, my name's Kate. Like, I'm interested in this position. Can you tell me anything about it? Some of them didn't write me back, but I got one woman that did. And she was like, oh, yes, here's the hiring manager's name. And Mm. here's some more information. So then I had a name. I found the hiring manager. I sent him a message to with my link to my website And that's kind of how the conversation got started. So him and I were chatting on LinkedIn and he said, Hey, can you email me your resume? Mm -hmm. And I did. And I feel like he then pushed it along with the recruiter. So that's how I leapfrogged over those 125 other applicants to kind of get the ball rolling for myself. Oh, absolutely. And this is, this is key. Oftentimes we think, Oh, the recruiter is the quote unquote gatekeeper. And so I need to go to the recruiter, but it's the hiring manager who makes the decision. And it's the hiring manager who can move you along much faster. um, Because again, the recruiter is doing an excellent job of finding the best candidates amongst the group of 127. Sometimes as I heard, it's, you know, I've been keeping up on this. It's about 1200 applications for some of the most popular jobs. That is a lot of applications, but there's a lot of folks in there that actually are not even minimally qualified, even realistically minimally qualified. They're just doing that rage applying we're talking about earlier, right? And so getting direct access to the hiring manager is something that most people don't actually do. And of those that do, a lot of them are the generic messages. So doing what you're doing is, you know, reaching out to the right person, having someone that you can say, hey, so-and-so gave me your contact information or have me reach out to you and then finding that common ground. Um, and of course, sharing your experience is going to be super helpful. Um, okay, so I don't want to keep you too long. We've been talking for about 45 minutes. Can you believe it? I feel like our conversations are always <laughs> longer than we planned for them. Um, and this has been so, so amazing. Um, but I do want to ask you one more question. Sure. So- as a part of this entire process, you've been sharing some of the new ventures that you have going on, and I've seen something to do with circles. I've seen some opt-in. So share with us what you have going on and how people can get a hold of you. Yes, absolutely. So my website is www.katespearconnect.com. And there you can find some of the resources that I was talking about earlier. You can find a link to connect with me on LinkedIn. I am starting, it's a lean in circle is what it's called. And it's just a group, like a networking group online for women to connect, network, learn some things and grow. Um, the whole networking thing that I've dabbled into the past six months has just been amazing. And I found this just as kind of a way that I can pay that forward to people and kind of provide something that people have provided to me along the way. Um, And I just love the connection aspect of it because the other piece of advice I would offer real quickly too would be to always be networking, to always Mm -hmm. be looking, even if you're not actually looking for a job, to just kind of continue to put yourself out there because you truly never know. I mean, I feel like a year ago, I would have never guessed that 
my whole last year happened, but (laughs) it did. So if you can be a little proactive with that, um, but there's a place on the website where you can join the LinkedIn circle right now. We're up to about 30 women that are a part of this and it's going to be amazing. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so exciting. And again, that is www.katespearconnect.com. That link will be in the description. Um, And then of course, I'll also provide your LinkedIn profile so that you can continue to connecting with more folks who are interested. Um, So other than that, I've got more questions, but we're going to have to leave them for another episode because I'm sure that you've got other things to do after our 45 minute conversation here. Um, But it was so lovely to chat with you and to catch up with you again. And before we go, if you had any final words that imagine thousands of people are going to listen to this, if you had any final words, what would you share? I would say, you know, to not be afraid, just go for it. Put one foot in front of the other, even if you don't know where you're going, Just take those small steps because small steps add up to big things. Wonderful. Small steps add up to big things. Well, again, it was great having you. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for having me.